We are about ready to head into game number three here on Zell Naga Caverns. Link engaged. All right, Jill, I am excited to see uh, who will end up in the finals here for the 10th edition of the TeamSpeak TL Open. We have got one cruncher, the Protoss, in the 2 o'clock position. He is in the orange color uh, so that he could be seen at night or if he's out hunting with friends. And uh, Stefano is in the pink uh, playing the Zerg, and he is going to be in the 7 o'clock position. And you know, we if history has taught us anything, we might as well call this five gate all in caverns because this is a really, really good map mm. for doing four gate all ins, and that's what we've seen Cruncher. You know, he's shown that he's not he's not embarrassed that that's what he wants to do. He's not shy about it. That's just that's what he does, man. He'll cannon you, and then he'll five gate, or he'll just five gate. That's that's what he wants to play. So Stefano is gonna have to find something that uh, is not going to die to a five gate, or he's gonna have to play a little better than he did uh, in game number one when he tried to deal with it straight up off a of fast expansion. Well, unfortunately, I think that dealing with on, on metal is it might be a little bit easier just because there's so right. much more room to cover here on Zelnaga. So uh, that could be a strike against him. However, it does look like he's going to make his way out. Unfortunately, not even close to 300, but he's used that as a ploy before. And it looks like it'll be the case again as his extractor goes down and uh, he's just tricking the hell out of that probe. The probe's like, man, I'm delaying his hatch so much. But the pool <laughs> goes down in the main gateway down for uh, one cruncher and you know I will give one cruncher some credit here because he at least it, I can tell he's a guy that plays Protoss simply because he loves the utility that he is given DT's cannons warp gates all in the same game like this guy was like I'm pulling every dirty trick out of the Protoss <laughs> back pocket that I can but at least he did at least he didn't just go for one it failed and then he was done uh, I like yeah. the fact that he uh, uh, you know he fought to stay alive you know, I think that's that's a very good point, and to expand on that, that's a that's a sign of kind of a bad cheeser, is the one who does it. It works, but not all the way, and then he's dead. He has no follow up. He has nothing else, and we definitely did not see that out of Cruncher. It was well thought out. He had transitions out of it, and some on your feet, but some actually looked prepared, and, and that's the sign of someone who's who has experience with their playstyle. Yep, well, we've got uh, Zergling Speed uh, being researched here, about 20% done. couple of Zerglings coming out. Meanwhile, Psycor is about to finish for one Cruncher. He's got a lot of uh, energy saved up here on his Nexus. Right. His second gas is down as well. Uh, so we're going to see the Warp Gate research started immediately. And then he'll Chrono Boost out a uh, Stalker and uh, then get his Warp Gate uh, done as well. Now, we've seen some very successful, by the way, the Hatchery's gone down for the Zerg. But we've just seen some successful, like, I, I call them paired unit, uh, just sort of assaults with by the Protoss, where, like, you have a Zealot, you have a, a Stalker, and you're able mm -hmm. to do some decent damage if the Zerg is sort of not ready for it. But in this particular situation, it looks like he's going to go harass this Overlord. And we do have these Zerglings just outside the base of Cruncher. A production tab showing us that... Uh... You know, not a whole lot going on on the Zerg side. He's got a few, another queen coming. He's got Metal Ball Boost about to finish. Laying down that first creep tumor and going to send that queen over to the natural expansion. Uh, meanwhile, Cruncher dropping his two gateways and only two thus far. I'm going to be shocked if there's not a third, but uh, the order a little off here yet again. And what I'm really looking for this game as opposed to the first one is I hope he spends his gas on the sentries first. Let's him build up energy, then brings him across the map, and when he's got a lot of minerals left over, uh, then he can start warping the Zealots. Looks like the Zerglings want to sneak in as uh, the Sentry and, and Stalker are out, and actually losing the Overlord, that is pretty big uh, when you're dealing with any sort of warp gate oh. rush. Yeah, that's the second time that we've seen him lose an Overlord in these types of positions, and this time uh, it did put him down in the red. Leaves his Zerglings unattended, and now the force of Cruncher makes his way in. He's got to be careful, though. The Zerglings of speed can get in there real quick. Of course, only a few of them aren't going to do too much damage, but he will retreat back, and look at this. The uh, Wall-O Spinecrawler has uh, been built here. 
as he is going to try to keep the Protoss out of his base. One thing uh, you'll notice here that uh, as we get started, again, the Roachhorn is down. We do have Roaches coming out this time, which is a big difference from uh, game number one. Yeah, but Stefano has like no drones. He's at 20 harvesters right now, and three of those are on gas, so really not getting a lot. And look at this, Cruncher actually switching it up. Gonna put down the expansion while he presses forward, and, and you know, I have a map hack on right now, and I didn't expect that, so I really don't think Stefano is gonna expect that unless uh, he's caught a glimpse of that. Turning on his vision, no, he has no idea of uh, what's coming his way. As uh, the Protoss unit's moving down, uh, gonna run into this spine crawler wall. Let's see if they get aggressive or if they're gonna turn back. Looks like they're gonna turn back and uh, just put pressure and then pull away. Force the Zerg to make units as opposed to drones. Well, you put up your own expansion. That's uh, that's a really smart way to play the game. Yeah, you're. I mean, you're absolutely right. Now we do see him moving his spine crawlers uh, forward here to uh, you know start to push out his forward line of defense. Meanwhile, the uh, Cruncher crew is heading on back and making sure that that. Exp oh, in comes Mr. Zergling, and he sees everything. He tries to run around the huge wall, and suddenly you see the Zerg forces move out and not going to go in for an attack. He's going to think about maybe getting ready for this third here, and uh, he is droning back up, but as you mentioned, right. uh, well, he's caught up quite a bit. 29 to 31, I think once he realized that it wasn't coming, he uh, must have thrown out a, a bunch more here, but uh, thinking about a third and maybe just a huge surge of units. Yeah, Weed, I, was, I actually had the production tab open, and right when that Zergling ran into the natural, he made seven drones. So he okay. realized the attack isn't coming. Uh, you know, my Protoss opponent has made an expansion. I need to catch back an economy. And we can see his focus has completely changed, whereas in game one, we saw him bouncing between drones and units. He was a little bit unsure what uh, Cruncher was up to. But, uh, I mean, here in game three, Stefano knows clearly he's getting his, his third extractor up, he's going up to lair, and he is making drones. Yeah, and what else? Uh, well, I mean, the lair coming out is going to be big to find out where he's going to go next with this. But I do like that not only has he cleared out the gold, but he's also going for these back rocks as well. Sometimes these are often neglected, and then when your units are needed the most, that's when you're having to break down those rocks. Of course, you also open up right. uh, an alternate attack pattern, but it doesn't look like, based on the posture of one cruncher, uh, that that is even going to be his uh, plan here. As, uh, you know, we see him getting out some immortals and uh, several immortals actually second one on the way getting a, a fourth gas at his natural uh, meanwhile here the uh, evo chamber going down burrow which we saw him use uh, with great success uh, in the last game and then of course the roach speed as well so maybe look for him to uh, go tunneling claws at some point his drone counts looking a lot better too i must admit Cruncher's got this uh, this observer that's gone into Stefano's main base and saw everything. I believe he saw that there's only a roach warren, and uh, he's making only roaches. And if we see his response, making a lot of immortals and actually putting down this second robotics facility. So uh, he, I think he has a plan to just go gateway uh, immortal, uh, unless there's a robotics bay, but I don't see it. And against roach, this could be really effective, and, and Stefano, if he's not careful... Uh, and, and doesn't switch in with some sort of Hydra support or, or Mutalisks or something. Uh, he might just run into an immortal wall that he can't break down. Well, I mean, you'd expect uh, Hydras to come out here, but uh, right. either he knows that that Observer's there, he doesn't want to give it up, or he's just, I don't know, he's spending so much on units right now. Is he actually going to go forward for an attack? This would be a horrible, horrible idea here. But let's see his uh, army a little bit out of position. He is going to push forward. Oh, and that's he—he he gave himself up. He's—he's uh, he's going to be found out, and he's going to have to back off here, taking his gold now. He will get back. What does he have? He cannot win with roaches. Trust me, I've tried it. I—I've <laughs> I, tried it before. It can't happen. Uh, but he has double Evo chamber up, getting of course uh, missile attack, plus one missile and uh, plus one carapace. But again, no Hydralis then. We see no Infestation Pit, no uh, Spire, so nothing off of that Lair Tech except for the upgrades for the Roaches. You know, and he actually, he doesn't have the Tunneling Claws yet, not getting it, but he does have Burrow. And the interesting thing there, despite having two uh, Robotics, Cruncher actually didn't have an Observer there. So that would have been really nice to just Burrow in, move into the main base, 
and uh, kill your, your opponent's Nexus, but we might not get to that point because I feel like Stefano is just going to die here with this Immortal Heavy. Oh, there is a lot of Immortals here. Good God. How many? One, two, three, four, five, six Immortals moving in, just raining down on this hatchery. Going to take it down so quickly. And, and what can the Roaches do but watch? Probably nothing. Zealots even on hold position. You know, this is so easy. They don't even need to attack. Now this one going to come in. Buffer attacks. And here we go. Roaches moving in with speed. Going to try to get right up with the Immortals. Oh my God. So many forces. This is like ridiculous amounts of force fields that are not even necessary and there is an observer there so despite being burrowed uh cruncher sees exactly what's going on more force fields oh my god supplies 140 for the protoss player 112 for the uh, zerg player as cruncher just cuts right through the defenses of stefano and i don't think he has an out at this point there is no way i mean i'm looking at the army there is no freaking way that with all of these immortals and the sentries that he is going to be able to take this out here comes another push again the force fields will oh funnel a lot of these roaches to the front and there it is the well played take it for what it is i call it a gg and uh, we are going to see our protoss player move forward here to face the winner of the second semifinal, that'll either be TLO or Phoenix. And uh, I got to say, that was just played so well by the Protoss. Yeah, you know, uh, Stefano's play, I think, left a little bit to be desired. It seemed like he just got basically count, you know, hard unit countered and, and didn't adapt to it. So I'm a little bit surprised there. But Cruncher... Played it nicely. I, I think he was inside uh, Stefano's head a little bit too. Uh, because he was certainly inside my head. I expected another five gate. You know, if you're going to pick Zelnega, that's that's the standard five gate all in map or four gate all in uh, PVZ. So, you know, he had those spine crawlers up really quickly. I think he was worried about that. And then suddenly he realized, oh God, he's actually expanded off three gates. I'm I'm way behind. And and, you know, follow, couple that up with the Immortals on Roaches, and, and there's just nothing you can do.